Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Bears Wines and Spirits review. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing Black Sheep Ale. 4.4% A beer that I would say is available in most of the big supermarkets, if not all of them. And uh, as far as I know, quite a popular beer. Um, ooh For me, Black Sheep, uh, their best beer is Rig Welter, uh, if that's how you pronounce it. R's and W's. Oof. But uh, yeah, that to me is their premium beer. Good, strong beer, great quality, you know, throughout. So we'll give this a punt and uh, see how it goes. Now, according to ratebeer.com, it's classed in the style of a bitter. Um, funnily enough, it hasn't got that many ratings. And I know this beer has been around a hell of a long while. Uh, 2.95 out of 5 ratings, so not the greatest. 78, and that's from 78 ratings, so not a lot of ratings for such a popular, well, well-known beer. So, they say it's a second ever beer, a complex premium bitter. Back in the day, best bitter was lonely, it needed a companion. We knew we needed a quality, premium strength beer that would stand alongside our cracking session bitter. We present to you Black Sheep Ale. Black Sheep Special Ale is a powerfully flavoured pint that packs a punch with rich fruit aromas and a distinctive smooth bittersweet taste as well as the popular cast version. We started bottling this in 1993 and today is one of the best selling bottled beers nationally. Available in all major supermarkets. Just like I said really. So. Amber in colour. Good carbonation and lacing. White head. Bubbly head, quite a decent sized head on it. Definitely smells like a traditional beer. You know, it's got that traditional ale beer smell to it. Unless, unless the bottle down here is blown. There's always a chance that one of my bottles has uh, ale. Why is that not stronger? got that much beer down here it's ridiculous I've been brewing since Christmas and pretty much non-stop and I've got two on the go at the moment and uh, yeah <laughs> taking the old um, beer reviews and homebrew to a to another level I suppose but yeah so aroma yeah the rich fruit it did say rich fruit aromas yes definitely rich fruit aromas and malt Same in the taste, quite coming through as a nice taste. Yeah, rich fruit in the taste as well, that's quite nice. See, that's only 4.4%. That's not bad at all. It's a bit warmer today in here, it's 18 degrees in there. Don't know how to make a difference, I'm a few degrees higher. And, um, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's certainly warmed the beer up. This is a beer, in my eyes, that needs to be drank slightly warmer. Um, and it's showing because it, it this it's like winter beers. They need to be drank warmer, and it brings out the flavours. A uh, few reviews. I'll do two. This is uh, very recent reviews as well. 3.2 out of 5. Clear, deep amber colour with a medium white head. Aroma of caramel toffee, some chocolate, slight twigs. Taste of caramel, slight chocolate, toffee, and a hint of fruit and subtle twigs. What's this blow? Eat and smell twigs. Uh, drink and smell twigs. Medium bodied and soft carbonation. A dryish, multi bitterness in the finish. Pleasantly surprised by this. There you go. Another one, 3.2. Uh, pours a clear dark amber colour with a small frothy off-white head. Aroma is malty caramel and ripe fruit. A moderately sweet caramel malt taste. Some ripe fruit flavours and a pop bitter finish. So, yeah, some good interesting reviews there. Obviously the malt and caramel all coming through and obviously the fruit as well. And yeah, yeah it's actually well pleasant. Oh. 
so we're back on the uh, decorating thing now and I'm thinking how to change this shell I've got a beach scene that we bought from Lidl 10 quid and I'm thinking of putting it on the wall behind you because it's it's all this white wall as you can see in the background and uh, I'm going to put it on the wall this wall here because I can pull everything out even the bar pulls out and uh, put a beach and let overlap onto the ceiling because my walls are obviously just about six foot high and then it goes up so what I'm going to do I'm going to overlap it onto the ceiling so you walk and it's just a big beach on one side with um, a lot of bit a lot of beer present and uh, but I also in that corner just to the left where the baton is over there you can just see it where I keep clonking my head on them bloody things there I'm going to have a sh I'm going to make a shelf that hangs down and have um, maybe a tablet or somewhere for my phone and the camera to go so I can talk and be able to pick any information off or I might start using one of my old laptops and uh, pin it to the wall somehow and um, use that to get information and be able to get it all without having to search when I'm actually doing a review because obviously it slows the review down. My reviews are long anyway because I, I gab on. So, enjoying this. Um, I've obviously had it before. Um, obviously never reviewed it, you know, it's not been a review beer. I've had it sat amongst all these review beers for a long time. Uh, bought it, you know, because I knew I hadn't reviewed it. And it wasn't really bothered or looking forward to reviewing it. But it's actually uh, not too bad at all, really. Um, yes, decent taste. I've just been to my local Asda in Arnold as well. Um, and I noticed, even though it's a supermarket, it's got nowhere near the range that the Asda Extra or whatever they call it, the one at West Bridgeford near us has got. That range, their range, they've got at least 30 cans that I've never had before. So when I get some uh, pennies to spend on cans, because I'm all right for review stocks. You always have to be a few, a few in front for reviews. But when I start getting low, I'm going to have to go there with about 100 quid and uh, blast a load of the cans and start doing some wine reviews as well, because I'm, I'm lacking on the wine review front. But uh, there's only so many reviews you can do, obviously, you know. Unless you want to drink yourself into oblivion, which is not the best thing. So yeah, this, uh, it's no big welter. Yeah, we, we, you know, most people, you know, you'd say that. But for a beer that's 4.4%, wow, it's got some good taste to it, you know. For a beer I wasn't looking forward to reviewing, even though I have drank it before. It's actually quite nice. Yeah, I can imagine that something like a 7% version of this would be really special, you know. That, you know, that is actually, absolutely. The reviews on Rapier don't do it justice. Um, unless I'm drinking it at exactly the right temperature, which I think I am. Um... Yeah, that's an absolute perler. Wow. You know, um, and that's the thing about doing beer reviews, you know. Sometimes the odd beer can surprise you and, uh, you know, chuck itself way up your list. And today, uh, Black Sheep Ale has done that. Um... Wow. So, a beer that I was thinking would be in the 4.0 4 category, you know, round about there or maybe slightly less. Um, so, Paul. Paul's a nice colour. Breaking it down. Paul's a nice colour. Uh, good carbonation, good lacing, decent head. Uh, aroma, rich fruit, malt, taste, that fruitiness, the malt, the caramel. It's all there, um, and written abundance as well, especially the fruity flavours and rich, like, 
Christmas cake type flavours, they're all there. And for a beer that's 4.4%, wow! It's punching in the 6% category. You know, it's got some right good taste to it. Absolutely stunned at how good that is. Wow. You know, blows the misconception, you know. You know, your preconceptions of a beer, it just blew it out of the water. It's way better than I thought it was. Uh, wow. So, for review purposes, I'm going to give it a 4.55 out of 5. That was absolutely a belter of a beer. Jesus. That's, uh, unless they've changed it from what it used to be years ago. I can't remember it being that good. But that. Wow, it's got me on the right day obviously because that was an absolute belting beer. Whew. Thanks for watching, see you soon.